Ashoka East Ahsoka, also Ahsoka, circa 304-232 BCE, popularly known as Ashoka the Great, was the third emperor of the Maurya Empire of Indian subcontinent during circa 268-232 BCE. His empire covered a large part of the Indian subcontinent, stretching from present-day Afghanistan in the west to present-day Bangladesh in the east, with its capital at Pataliputra. A patron of Buddhism, he is credited with playing an important role in the spread of Buddhism across ancient Asia. Much of the information about Ashoka comes from his Brahmi edicts, which are among the earliest long inscriptions of ancient India, and the Buddhist legends written centuries after his death. Ashoka was a son of Bindusara, and a grandson of the dynasty's founder Chandragupta. During his father's reign, he served as the governor of Ujjain in central India. According to some Buddhist legends, he also suppressed a revolt in Takshashila as a prince, and after his father's death, killed his brothers to ascend the throne. Ashoka's edicts state that during his eighth regnal year, circa 260 BCE, he conquered Kalinga after a brutal war, and the destruction caused by the war made him repent violence. This claim is omitted in his inscriptions found in the Kalinga region, possibly because Ashoka considered it politically inappropriate to admit his remorse before the people of Kalinga, or because the claims made in the edicts are not fully accurate and are meant to impress the people of other regions. Ashoka subsequently devoted himself to the propagation of Dhamma or righteous conduct, the major theme of the edicts. Ashoka's edicts suggest that a few years after the Kalinga War, he was gradually drawn towards Buddhism. The Buddhist legends do not mention the Kalinga War at all, and variously state that Ashoka converted to Buddhism after being dissatisfied with the leaders of the other faiths or after witnessing miracles performed by Buddhist leaders. They credit Ashoka with establishing a large number of stupas, patronizing the Third Buddhist Council, supporting Buddhist missionaries, making generous donations to the Sangha, and even persecuting non-Buddhists. The historicity of these legends is debated among modern historians, as they are often inconsistent with the edicts and among themselves, contain mythological elements, and exaggerate Ashoka's wickedness before and his piousness after his conversion to Buddhism. Ashoka's own edicts suggest that he favored Buddhism, but also patronized the other major contemporary faiths including Brahmanism, Jainism, and Ajivikaism. Ashoka's existence as a historical king had almost been forgotten, but this changed with the decipherment of the Brahmi script in the 19th century. Historians connected the titles Priyadasi and Devanampriya mentioned in his edicts to the Ashoka of Buddhist legends, and established Ashoka's reputation as one of the greatest Indian emperors. The emblem of the modern Republic of India is an adaptation of the lion capital of Ashoka. Information about Ashoka comes from his inscriptions, other inscriptions that mention him or are possibly from his reign, and ancient literature, especially Buddhist texts. 5. These sources often contradict each other, although various historians have attempted to correlate their testimony. 6. So, for example, while Ashoka is often attributed with building many hospitals during his time, there is no clear evidence that any hospitals existed in ancient India during the 3rd century BC or that Ashoka was responsible for commissioning the construction of any. 7. Inscriptions Ashoka's inscriptions are the earliest self-representations of imperial power in the Indian subcontinent. 8. However, these inscriptions are focused mainly on the topic of Dharma, and provide little information regarding other aspects of the Maurya state or society. 6. Even on the topic of Dharma, the content of these inscriptions cannot be taken at face value. In the words of American academic John S. Strong, it is sometimes helpful to think of Ashoka's messages as propaganda by a politician whose aim is to present a favorable image of himself and his administration, rather than record historical facts. 9. Buddhist legends Much of the information about Ashoka comes from Buddhist legends, which present him as a great, ideal king. 13. These legends appear in texts that are not contemporary to Ashoka and were composed by Buddhist authors, who used various stories to illustrate the impact of their faith on Ashoka. This makes it necessary to exercise caution while relying on them for historical information. 14. Among modern scholars, opinions range from downright dismissal of these legends as mythological to acceptance of all historical portions that seem plausible. 15. The Buddhist legends about Ashoka exist in several languages, including Sanskrit, Pali, Tibetan, Chinese, Burmese, Sinhala, Thai, Lao, and Cottonese. All these legends can be traced to two primary traditions. 16. The North Indian tradition preserved in the Sanskrit language texts such as Divyavadana, including its constituent Ashokavadana, and Chinese sources such as a Yu Wang Xuan and a Yu Wang Qing. 16. There are several significant differences between the two traditions. For example, 
The Sri Lankan tradition emphasizes Ashoka's role in convening the Third Buddhist Council, and his dispatch of several missionaries to distant regions, including his son Mahinda to Sri Lanka. 16. However, the North Indian tradition makes no mention of these events. It describes other events not found in the Sri Lankan tradition, such as a story about another son named Kanala. 17. Even while narrating the common stories, the two traditions diverge in several ways. For example, both Ashokavadana and Mahavamsa mention that Ashoka's queen Tishyariksha had the body tree destroyed. In Ashokavadana, the queen manages to have the tree healed after she realizes her mistake. In the Mahavamsa, she permanently destroys the tree, but only after a branch of the tree has been transplanted in Sri Lanka. 18. In another story, both the texts describe Ashoka's unsuccessful attempts to collect a relic of Gautama Buddha from Ramagrama. In Ashokavadana, he fails to do so because he cannot match the devotion of the Nagas who hold the relic. However, in the Mahavamsa, he fails to do so because the Buddha had destined the relic to be enshrined by King Dutagamani of Sri Lanka. 19. Using such stories, the Mahavamsa glorifies Sri Lanka as the new preserve of Buddhism. 20. The 12th century text Raja Tarangini mentions a Kashmiri king Ashoka of Gonandia dynasty who built several stupas. Some scholars, such as Aural Stein, have identified this king with the Maurya king Ashoka. Others, such as Ananda W. P. Garage dismiss this identification as inaccurate. 24. Numismatic, sculptural, and archaeological evidence supplements research on Ashoka. 21. Ashoka's name appears in the lists of Mauryan kings in the various Puranas. However, these texts do not provide further details about him, as their Brahmanical authors were not patronized by the Mauryans. 22. Other texts, such as the Arthashastra and Indica of Megasthenes, which provide general information about the Maurya period, can also be used to make inferences about Ashoka's reign. 23. However, the Arthashastra is a normative text that focuses on an ideal rather than a historical state, and its dating to the Mauryan period is a subject of debate. The Indica is a lost work, and only parts of it survive in the form of paraphrases in later writings. See. For some scholars, such as Christopher I Beckwith, Ashoka, whose name only appears in the minor rock edicts, is not the same as King Piyadasi, or Devananya Piyadasi, i.e., beloved of the gods Piyadasi, beloved of the gods, being a fairly widespread title for king, who is named as the author of the major pillar edicts and the major rock edicts. 25. Beckwith suggests that Piyadasi was living in the 3rd century BCE, was probably the son of Chandragupta Maurya known to the Greeks as Amitrochates, and only advocated for piety, Dharma, in his major pillar edicts and major rock edicts, without ever mentioning Buddhism, the Buddha, or the Samgha. The single notable exception is the seventh edict of the major pillar edicts which does mention the Samgha, but is a considered a later fake by Beckwith. 25. Also, the geographical spread of his inscription shows that Piyadasi ruled a vast empire, contiguous with the Seleucid Empire in the West. 25. On the contrary, for Beckwith, Ashoka was a later king of the 1st 2nd century CE, whose name only appears explicitly in the minor rock edicts and elusively in the minor pillar edicts, and who does mention the Buddha and the Sangha, explicitly promoting Buddhism. 25. The name, Priyadasi, does occur in two of the minor edicts, Gujara and Bhairat, but Beckwith again considers them as later fabrications. 25. The minor inscriptions cover a very different and much smaller geographical area, clustering in central India. 25. According to Beckwith, the inscriptions of this later Ashoka were typical of the later forms of, normative Buddhism, which are well attested from inscriptions and Gandhari manuscripts dated to the turn of the millennium, and around the time of the Kushan Empire. 25. The quality of the inscriptions of this Ashoka is significantly lower than the quality of the inscriptions of the earlier Piyadasi. 25.